Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Nick's Quick Bits, uh, a segment where I, Nick, give you, our viewer, some uh, quick tidbits to help you along with your playing, uh, maybe a little bit of theory. And in this lesson today, we're looking at seventh chords. Uh, now, what I do when uh, my students want to expand their chord vocabulary to include seventh chords, rather than just teaching them the shape, um, that you need to play or the multiple shapes around the neck. I try to teach them how to create those seventh chords from the theory uh, that involves kind of the intervals uh, or the formulas to create those chords. Uh, and I think that's really important to have as a guitar player or as a musician in general, um, kind of how to create these chords rather than just knowing that, oh, this is an A major seven, I know I need to do two, one, two, and uh, that's how I play the chord. Um, anyway, we're going to dive into a little bit of theory. Uh, it'd be great if you already have a little bit of an understanding of kind of major and minor chords, root third fifth, root flat third fifth, as uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about how we start with those chords and expand them into using our seventh or our flat seventh interval uh, to create some seventh chords. So uh, let's grab the guitar and uh, we'll, d we'll dive right into it. So, before we get started, there's a couple of things that we just need to understand, and they are our basic, major, and minor chords, um, and the intervals that are in them. So, in our A major, for example, we would have a root, a third, and a fifth. That's A, C sharp, and E. Uh, and in our A minor chord, we would change our intervals slightly to have a root, a flat third, and a fifth. Now, what we do with all of our basic major and minor chords to turn them into sevenths, we add our seventh interval. And there are two types of seventh, just like there are two types of third, two types of sixth. And they're always found just by the octave. So if we just play a major scale, root, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and back to our octave. So we can see our seventh chord is one below our octave, and our flat seventh, if we play a natural minor scale, is we can see two notes below our octave. <clears throat> and that's really important uh, in understanding and how we're going to be creating our seventh chords. Uh, so to start with, major seven chords. All right, so to get started, our major seven shapes. Now, our formula for these are, of course, based from a major chord. So that's a root, a third, and a fifth. And then we're adding our seventh interval, not our flat seventh. So our seventh interval, as just discussed, is one below our octave. So that means if we're playing an A major chord, we need to find our octave in our A major chord. So quickly going through our strings, we have the A string, uh, we have an E on the D string, we have another A on the G string, we have a C sharp on the B string and another E, so we know our octave is on the G string. And we're going to move that down one fret to play our seventh interval. And we have an A major seven chord. We can do that, we can do it exactly the same with our E major chord. So we find our octave. Now we've got two octaves in our E major chord. We have one on the D and one on the high E string we're going to be moving down the one on the D. And exactly like before, we move that down one fret. Sounds a little bit dissonant at the moment, but once played with the chord, so we just rearrange our fingers a little bit. So we're still playing our fifth and our third, but we're moving our octave down to the first fret. So we're playing fret zero, two, one, one, zero, zero. We have our E major seven. And what you should be doing at home is then figuring out maybe how we do the D shape. So find the octave, drop it down one fret, and you'll have your D major seven shape. Uh, and then you can, of course, turn all of those shapes into bar chords, and you can play them all over the neck. And that's how we've created our major seven with our formula of root, third, fifth, seventh. Um, right, we've got a couple more to go. Minor sevenths next. All right, quick camera angle change and onto our minor sevenths. Um, now, the formula 
uh, as we're playing a minor seven chord, we're going to be basing our formula from a minor chord. So that would be root flat third, fifth, and the type of seventh that we're adding, you might be able to guess, it's going to be a flat seventh interval. Um, and that means we find our octave, maybe A for example, and rather than going down one fret to find our seventh interval, we need to go down two frets to find our flat seventh interval. Uh, let's put that in a chord. So we start with our minor chord, root, flat, third, fifth. Uh, we find our octave, and we did that in the previous chord. It's on the G string, that's our A, second fret, and rather than moving it down to a G sharp on the first fret, we need to move it down two frets to a G. So we have zero, two, zero, one, zero, a nice A minor seven. Doing the same for an E minor chord. Start with an E minor, root flat third fifth, adding our flat seventh. So again, finding that octave, it's just here on the D string, and we're moving that down two frets, so to fret zero. And that's a pretty bog standard E minor seven, zero, two, and the rest zeros. What a lot of people do with this chord is when we bar it, sounds a little bit muddy with this and this and the D string. Uh, so they take out this fifth chord, and uh, sorry, this fifth interval, and uh, they use their thumb for the root note. They don't play the A string, and they bar that first finger for the remainder of the chord because we're taking out our fifth here, but we also have our fifth on the B string, so we're not losing it. So there's our nice, pretty commonly used minor seven shape, starting from the E string, and we have our minor seven shape starting on uh, the A string, the A, the A minor seven shape, used a lot in Doobie Brothers stuff. Uh, great shape to know. And uh, right, let's move on to our dominant seventh. All right, kind of running out of camera angles here. Okay, on to our dominant seventh chord. Uh, now this is where it gets a little bit different. Um, our dominant seventh chord is built from our major chord. So we have a root, a third, and a fifth. Um, but obviously if we play a normal seventh, then all we're doing is playing a major seven chord. Uh, so we're adding a flat seventh to a major chord. And this gives us this really nice bluesy sounding dominant seventh type chord. Well, it is a dominant seventh. Um, and to do that, again, we find our octave, we're basing it off of a major chord, we find our octave and we drop it down two frets, uh, to fret zero in this case of the A chord. And we have our A7. A dominant seven. Uh, we can do the same with an E. So we find our bass chord, our root third fifth, so we're using an E major shape. Uh, the type of seventh that we want is a flat seventh, so we move that third finger down two frets, and we have our E7 chord, and again all of these can be played as bar chords. Uh, you can even add it to shapes like your C, uh, but rather than taking it away, we need to add something. So uh, if we look for our octave here, we know our C is here on the B string. But we can't really take that down two frets because it's already, it's only on fret one. So what we do is we find another octave uh, up here. This is our C on the G string, and we can move that down two frets. So it's on the G string, and that does a nice C7. Now with all of these chords, Try and now figure out how you'll be playing a D7 by dropping your octave down uh, two frets and see how you get on with that. One more shape to go. All right, our final chord type to go. Uh, not used that often, but certainly needs to be mentioned, and it's our diminished seventh chord. And uh, this is in the major scale as just a diminished chord, uh, and the formula for which is a root, a flat third, and a flat fifth. Uh, now that, it does sound a bit weird. 
Now, if you're not sure how to play one, let's look at an A minor to begin with. So we still need that root, flat, third, and fifth idea. And what we're doing is we're dropping our fifth down a fret from a five to a flat five. Our fifth on an A minor chord is here on the D string, second fret, and we need to drop that down one fret. Sounds really dissonant. I prefer playing it like this. It makes it a little bit easier on the fingers. And I'm being careful not to play the high E string here because that's our normal five and we don't want that to ring out as it's uh, sending a couple of mixed messages there. Uh, so that's our diminished chord. Now, how do we make it a minus seven flat five or a half diminished chord? Uh, the formula that we need is a root, a flat third, a flat fifth, and a flat seventh. So we find our octave like we have done every time uh, in our a, a diminished shape. It's on the G string, and we're dropping it down two frets because we want a flat seventh. And that leaves us with this, zero, one, zero, one, on the A, D, G, and B strings. Pretty dissonant chord, but it's definitely used. It definitely has a place in music, and it's good to know how to play. A half diminished, or A minus seven, flat five. Uh, onto the E shape. Uh, so again, uh, if we find our diminished chord, we start with an E minor and drop our fifth down, in this case on the A string, one fret. And we're just playing, I'm just playing the, uh, the four strings here, E, A, D, G, because I don't want to play that open B string and I can't really play it down one fret in this open shape. Uh, so we're gonna stick with those top four strings for now or the bottom four strings rather, and we're gonna find our flat seventh. So we find our octave, it's here on the D string, and we're gonna drop that down two frets because we need our flat seventh, and we're left with zero, one, zero, zero on the E, A, D, and G string, E minus seven flat five. Now, all of these shapes can be played as bar chords. Uh, if we think here, barring on D, D minor, D diminished, and then without that octave, D half diminished or D minus seven flat five. A nice way to play a half diminished chord using the E shape, uh, again, similar to how we did the minus seven shape, except uh, we're missing out this fifth here. So we don't drop this fifth down this time. Instead, we drop the fifth down on the B string we drop that down to our flat five. So the intervals that we find in this shape here, in our kind of E shape, kind of not, is our root on the E string. We're not playing our A string. I'm muting that with my thumb. We have our minus seventh interval here on the D string. This was our octave. We've gone down to our flat seventh. We've then got our minor third interval here on the G string and we have our flat fifth on, uh, on the B string, in this case on the fourth fret, and that would be an A minus seven flat five. Quite easy shape there, no, difficult shape. Uh, and the last thing I'd want you guys to do is figure out how to play your D minus seven flat five. Kind of figure out what shapes you need, drop the fifth, drop your octave down the right amount of frets, and let me know if you find that shape uh, there. All right that about covers it for our seventh chords and how they look. All right, everybody, that about covers it for seventh chords. Uh, just to have a quick recap of the formulas because they're the most important things. We would have our major seven chord, root, third, fifth, seventh. So dropping that octave down one fret. Our minor seventh chord, root, flat third, fifth, flat seventh. Uh, so dropping that octave down two frets. Our dominant seventh chord, root, third, fifth, flat seventh. So building a major chord and dropping our octave down two frets. And finally, our half diminished chord uh, or our minor seven flat five, root, flat third, flat fifth, flat seventh. Everything pretty dissonant in that chord. Drop everything down, drop the flat third, the octave, 
drop it all. And uh, as discussed throughout the video, try, I, we looked at the A shape and the E shape and changing those chords to seventh chords. You can do exactly the same with all the shapes, but at home, try and do it with the D shape. So try and play D minor seven, D major seven, D seven, D dominant seven, and D half diminished. See how you get on. Please let me know in the comments uh, if you've picked something up or if you have any questions. Uh, I'd love to address them and uh, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.